Now you clicked on this video to learn more about the NASA InSight mission and you came to the right place. Now NASA has been going to Mars for the last 54 years and have been on the surface of the red planet for the last 42 years. And all combined, they've sent orbiters and landers and rovers to try and understand different components of the atmosphere, the ionosphere, and take samples on the surface. But up until now, they haven't really been able to understand what's going on beneath the surface. And that's where the InSight mission comes into play. It's gonna try and understand how hot the inner core is, how much of it is liquid, and what made Mars uninhabitable. So let's talk about that. Now Mars as of right now is uninhabitable to humans and this is pretty obvious because it's too cold and there isn't enough air for us to breathe. However, scientists believed in the past that it wasn't always like this. In fact, if we look at the surface, we see what appears to be dried up lakes and possibly riverbeds. So what happened to the planet? This is one of the questions that InSight is trying to answer with its experiments on board. But before we jump into the technical details of the InSight lander, let's first examine our home planet Earth. One of the key arguments to why Earth is habitable is because of our very strong magnetic field. In fact, this magnetic field protects us from solar radiation and other particles that might be traveling through the interplanetary medium. And this magnetic field is actually caused by our inner solid core and our outer liquid core. Let me explain a little bit more about that. Now the outer core is estimated to be mostly made out of nickel and iron, and because of this, since they're liquid, they're probably really hot. In fact, they think that it's about 5,700 degrees Celsius, which is really warm. But if you take planet Earth, which apparently is very hot on the inside, and outer space, which is very, very cold, this means that heat is slowly going to irradiate out from the inside. And as the heat comes outwards, it actually causes the outer core to churn, which creates this magnetic field, which protects us from the sun's radiation. Now let's jump back to Mars. In fact, Mars doesn't have this internal magnetic field. In fact, since it doesn't have this, it's not protected from the sun's radiation, and therefore over time it loses its atmosphere. And this is one of the key reasons why scientists believe in the past it could have had lakes, because back then it had a bigger atmosphere. But now we want to understand what exactly happened. How long ago did these things occur? Now this then leads us to NASA's InSight lander. And in fact, instead of trying to understand more rocks on the surface, the atmosphere of the red planet or even the ionosphere a little bit more, it intends to look beneath the surface. And a lot of scientists call this basically a health checkup for the planet. It's going to be doing things similar to taking its pulse, it's going to be taking its temperature and tracking its motion as it travels around our star, the sun. Now let's discuss the first analogy they made of checking the planet's pulse. What exactly does that mean? In fact, they've actually implemented a seismometer into the lander that it will then place on the surface. And what it's able to do is similar to what seismometers are able to do on here on Earth. They actually predict or try and predict earthquakes or volcanic eruptions with tremblings that occurs on the surface. And the same thing's gonna happen on Mars. They're gonna try and predict or measure Mars quakes, as they call it, and try and see what could actually be happening underneath the surface surface. Again, checking its pulse. Now the second analogy they made is trying to take the planet's temperature. And what they're trying to understand here is how much heat is irradiating from the inner core. But we can't drill all the way down to the inner core. Therefore, they're going to take a probe and drill five meters down beneath the surface. And at different depths, it's going to record the temperature at different times. Therefore, they can try and predict how much heat is being exhausted throughout the entire planet. Now the third and last analogy that was made is tracking Mars as it travels throughout outer space. And in fact, similar to Earth, Mars both revolves around its axis as well as orbits around the sun. And because of this motion, what ends up happening is it wobbles a little bit in its orbit. Now being able to determine exactly where InSight is, exactly on Mars, and exactly in space, therefore we can deduce how much the planet is wobbling. And with that wobbling effect, scientists can predict how much liquid core there is or how much is sloshing around. And with all that information combined, we can understand more about what's going on beneath the surface of Mars. So now let's pull all of this information back together. If we look at Earth, it has a very hot inner core, which radiates heat, which causes the outer liquid core to then cycle, and that motion actually produces a magnetic field. But if we look at Mars, we see there isn't a magnetic field. Therefore, we have to work backwards. We have to understand, okay, how hot is it underneath the surface of Mars? Whether or not there is actual liquid to churn, and we 
we can determine that using all the different methods that we discussed. Doing the seismometer to see what's happening underneath the surface and how many Mars quakes there are. Using the probe that goes five meters below the surface to deduce how much heat is actually leaving the system. And lastly, detecting the wobbling motion of the planet to determine whether or not there's a lot of liquid underneath the surface. Now by measuring all of these traits on the red planet will not only improve our understanding of Mars, but also how planets form, what we need to look for when we're looking at other planets, moons or exoplanets in other solar systems. All of these things will help us point towards what makes something habitable and what makes something uninhabitable. All this combined will improve our understanding of science and the formation of planets. Now, if you want to learn more about how exactly the InSight lander is landing on the surface of Mars, I recommend watching this video. And if you actually want to watch the live stream that NASA is going to release, it's at 3 p.m. on November 26th Eastern Time. Now, I'll leave links in the description below if you want to see the NASA live stream or just learn more about NASA InSight altogether. But what do you think about the mission? Are you excited to see it land on the surface, or do you like rovers a little bit more? Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.